Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the study this morning. We're going to begin with a word of prayer. The dear Father in heaven, we are thankful for the time that we have again this morning to open your word, to look at the light that you have given to us, to understand it uh, correctly. And um, we just pray, Lord, that you can use us to your glory. Be with us uh, throughout this day. May your Holy Spirit speak to all the hearts around us. And uh, may we hear your voice and walk in the way that you direct us. Bless each person who is studying these things. Uh, we ask for a transformation of character and a power and a conviction in our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Well, good morning, everyone. So just to review, we're going to finish off uh, Jephthah here. Now, we had addressed this part of Jephthah, that is Jeff, uh, Jephthah's story dealing with the conflict with Ephraim, as relating to uh, uh, basically the December 6, 2020 uh, declaration that is this is the final way mark is based upon this conflict, um, which makes sense based upon the fact that Jephthah is December 6th, 2020 on the line of the judges. And of course, this shibboleth uh, here in Judges 2.6 is December 6th. So we had picked it as December 6th, the, the book of uh, that Jephthah was December 6th, and then we had put December 6th as the last date. And then, so all of this, we didn't like pre-plan it. It wasn't uh, decided beforehand. It just unfolded as we did the study. And then we had some symbols here. Uh, there's the 40 and 2000, uh, which is a number that has some interest. And then we also have... Um, uh, Jephthah judged Israel six years. So we have this six year symbol. And, and so we're going to look at that uh, a bit more. Now, as far as the diagram that we had drawn out, um, this, this is it here. And these dates, just uh, to review them, um, it begins with June 22nd, 2014. And that's because Jephthah is addressing a period of darkness, which has to do with the symbolic use of numbers and dates and structures, the kind that we are, are going to look at in detail. So it's a type of analysis. And that becomes a formalization of the, the line of the judges on the bigger line of the judges, right? So, um, go. I think it's, this one will work fine. So on the bigger line of the judges, you can see um, this is the formalization of the second angel's message in this judge's line, December 6, 2020. And, and this judge's line is going to deal with about the darkness in time in particular uh, within Adventism. So there's a darkness that exists within Advent Adventism that has to do with time as it relates to our bigger line. So when we look at, at this 9-11 here, even though this is 9-11, we know that the judge's line is a zoom into 9-11 as the arrival of the second angel, not the empowerment of the first angel. And so this is not the line that we would look at as the bigger line in our time. This is a zoom into a way mark on the bigger line. So, but even then it's, it's a zoom into uh, it as a rival of the second angel. So we could even say it's not even the bigger line. It's still down a step, but those we'll deal with at other times. Um, so, so we can see this December 6, 2020 event within our movement uh, becomes a formalization of a message 
that really becomes prominent with the failure of the July 18, 2020 prediction. That is, the explanation for our failure is a deep analysis into the symbolic use of time, which is then going to be rejected by FFA, which are the ones that actually made the national uh, prediction. And, and they made it against my warning that it is on a line of failed predictions. So that is uh, the type of analysis I was doing that showed that it would fail was ignored. So after July 18th, we then can look at it and see there is an explanation for our failure. FFA was unwilling to admit the failure on the correct basis. They just threw out the baby with the bathwater. And, and that was a mistake. Now, part of it, and I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but when I mentioned to Bronwyn about the fact that I had sent this email to Jeff on April 26, 2020, showing that July 18th was in a line of failed predictions and that Jeff said that he was going to look at it, never did. He never got back to me on it. He said he was going to watch the video that I did. He was going to read what I had written. He never did get back to me. And I was surprised that because he seemed to be hinting in that direction in some of his studies, but then backed off from it. So I don't know what was going on behind the scenes. But when I mentioned this to Bronwyn after July 18th, before December 6, 2020, uh, she seemed quite upset that I would suggest that somehow I was um, warning uh, Jeff and it was ignored. It was like, you know, basically, who are you uh, to say that, you know, you, you weren't really wrong because you, you warned us about this. I can't, I know it's, it's, was in the WhatsApp chat with um, the FFA, whatever that one was called, um, the discussion uh, chat that I had that, and I might have it in an email too, it's possible, but um, so, so FFA was not willing to admit that they had moved without counsel of all the light that we had. But I still supported uh, warning Nashville. I believe that it was necessary. Um, and of course, we can see in God's providence how that warning fits into the structure. Now, so these dates here, these are, um, you know, the judge's line. But when we go here to Jephthah, we can see that that is where we're going to end up. December 6, 2020, this is the empowerment. So in this history, that means in this line, when we zoom into that December 6, 2020 waymark, we have a back history, so to speak, that leads up to uh, what is rejected. That is, this light that is given through these waymarks are what ends up being rejected. Now, I added a couple little things here, or one little thing here that we're going to look at. Um, but this came from Ron. So Ron did some analysis yesterday. So we're going to look at his analysis. Um, I think this is the right one. <clears throat> so what you're looking at is um, this, the same thing that we saw with Jephthah. So this is Jephthah's line. As you can see, and it starts with this June 22nd, 2014 date. Now, basically, Ron, you just put these dates into the calendar converter and looked at the spans of time, right? Yes. Yeah, so it, it you can save the dates and it will give you up to 10 dates that you can then compare these different spans. Well, I didn't, I don't, I didn't do it that way, but okay. Well, well that's the easiest way to do it. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to show me that one. <laughs> well, you just save the date. So when you use your calendar converter, you just save the date. That's oh, all. Oh, oh, that's using the calendar converter on the Palmoni? Yeah. Okay. I didn't even know I could do that. Yeah. So you can save the dates. It saves so much time. And then you can even save the dates you've saved 
so that you can open up them up later. So you can save up to 10 dates and then you can save that uh, uh, those that list of dates and and then you can just open it up later so you don't have to do it over. And you can you can save dates and you can also remove dates from your list and compare different things. So th that's what I would have done. Now, um, there's some very significant things here. So we're going to look at um, what I would consider the first one, and that is when we go from June 22nd, 2014. So that's going to be the camp meeting where uh, Noel is going to present the first day of the first month and the first day of the fifth month, right? So he's going to give the midnight cry camp meeting date, working out the correct calendar uh, for 1844. And that's going to be 123 days before the midst of the week of the camp meeting that I met in in 2014. Now, of course, we could also notice 120 days to the start of that camp meeting because it begins on October 19th. So, um, so you got the one, two, three, or the one twenty. Either one would uh, give us some significance. But I mark October 22, 2014. That's the day after I finish my presentations on chronology. But it's the midst of that week. So now I've chosen that midst of the week as as part of a a symbol. So there are times that I have a look at a week of a camp meeting and look at the middle date. And this is an example. And so if you look at June 22nd, that's going to be uh, this date that represents FFA. And um, that first camp meeting in Arkansas after they had begun the School of the Prophets. Though so it's going to be at Lambert Church, not at the School of Prophets, because they don't have any facilities there other than a couple of houses and a, and a garage. Um, now, uh, let me see here. I don't even know if they had the garage yet. So then you got um, from this June 22nd, 2014 date, January 11th, 2020. So that's the end of the Levitical Chias. That's that date that Jeff marks 81 days later, that is, if we count it inclusively, it's 81 days later. So on the 81st date, on March 31st, he does a presentation where he refers back to this uh, January 11th date. And um, it's also two months and 20 days, which is just pretty simple, right? Just, you can see from January to March is two months and from January 11th to March 31st is 20 days. So you have this symbol of the 220, which is a restoration, an 81 symbol of midnight, but it, it's, uh, it has other significance as well. Here in this case, even if we never had those as symbols, it does tie us to July 18th. That is, if we go to July 18th from June 22nd, right? And we know that June 22nd is tied to that January 11th date and the January 11th date is died, tied to the March 31st date because of the uh, presentation. You can see this 2, 2 and 8, 1. And if you look here, it's 22, 18 days to July 18th, which is 18 backwards is 81 and 22 backwards is 22. Um, so you have this symbol here tied together with these two dates. And of course, this is the 22nd day of the month, and this is the 18th day of the month. So you've got the 22 and the 18 there as well. So it ties this all together in a nice tight bow, right? You can see just those four dates are all tied together with those symbols. Now, it also gives us this 2030 date which is, uh, of course, the year 2030. So the 2030 is, we're going to look at that in a bit, but we know that the year 2030 is represented here. So, so this we're going to look at. Now, 
What's that? Um, I sent you another. I sent you the notes of all the dates. It's in a Word document I just sent you. Okay. Well, I don't know if I'll look at that. Um, right. So now. there's like six more six more things that aren't on that chart that I found after I had sent that. Okay. Well, we won't look at that right now. Okay. Cause I'll have to think about it. I'll have to look at it. Um, now we also have this beginning and end tied together with, uh, 77 months and 14 days. So that would be, um, just Gregorian months, right? So that would be, you just look at the span of time on, on a calendar and you can see, uh, and when you're counting this, you would be, um, it's what, six years plus five months. So 72 plus five, right, from June to December is, let me see, how does it go? Six, six times 12 is, so 70, 70 months plus seven months, right? So June to December, let me see, June, July, August, September. No, so it's, there's 72 months and six years, right? Yeah, 72 months plus five months plus 14 days. So that is if you go to uh, November 22nd and then you count to December 6th, you're going to have 14 cardinal days, right? Anybody who... What was the dates again? Well, we're just going from June 22nd, 2014. You're going to count. You're going to count six years, which is seventy-two months. Six times uh, twelve is seventy-two, and then you have five months from June to November, right? June, July, August, September, October, November. That's going to be five months. So that gives you seventy-seven months, and then you have fourteen days from November twenty-two to December 6th. That's why you have 77 months and 14 days. Simple way to count it. Okay. So that's just, that's just using our calendar. It's not a biblical count of months. It's just Gregorian months. And so you use that as a symbol of 7777, right? 77 months plus two weeks, seven days and seven days. That's why you put 7777 there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, so some of these other dates, the 59 um, connected with K, you know, Chirag's age and, and those, I'm going to ignore those because I don't think they're actually significant. But that's just my opinion. Uh, okay. I, I just found them. That's all I did. Yeah, I know. But I understand that. Yeah. But so you found them and you looked at these numbers and you, know, you say, okay, this these numbers exist. Um, so then we have 2070 days. So we get the two seven, which we have in that verse. Um, I don't see particularly, the, the only thing I can say about October 22 and June 22, we know those exist in Samuel Snow's letters, right? Because you're going to have his Pentecost letter is written on june 22nd and so he also publishes his first letter on february 22nd so you got you know three months from february 22nd to june 22nd and then uh you're gonna have um june july august september october you're gonna have let me see february Four months, pardon me, four months from February 22nd to June 22nd, and then four months from June 22nd uh, to October 22nd. But you also have um, August 22nd. So on August 22nd, he's going to uh, publish The True Midnight Cry. And... Um, Okay, so if you take the 18th and the 22nd in the alphabet, uh, you have to explain that, Iran. So anyway, we'll get back to what we are talking about. So what are you saying, Iran? 
Uh, yeah, I just typed in the, those numbers. I wanted to see what they were. Um, so it'd be the 5th and the 9th and the 18th and the 22nd, in, which if you multiply, it gives you 17820. Uh, okay. Another interesting thing. Okay. Well, that does ties to the 59 there, too. So yeah, so that and, and the one seven eight two zero, it's of course looks like one eight seven two zero, but it's also a number that has um, significance, which we're not going to look into. So what what we can say, because I don't want to go into too much detail on this, what we can say is we can look at this particular line, Jephthah's line, and we find multiple examples of what Jephthah's line is about, what was rejected on December 6, 2020. So December 6, 2020, they chose this time to publish this uh, um, document, right, the declaration. And I, I don't think they chose to publish it on that date ahead of time. I think what ended up happening was the events of that weekend, particularly Daniel Vanderhorst's presentation on the 5th, sort of forced their hand because we had this study plan Sunday morning. And of course, you know, there was no warning. All of a sudden this, this ban happened and the declaration was, was published, right? So, so they didn't think about it. I mean, and they wouldn't have thought about it, you know, but they didn't think we're publishing this on December 6th. Um, maybe we should choose a better date, one that's not going to witness against what we're doing. But they chose the 126, right, to publish that declaration. And of course, it then gives us all these ties to, um, to this, the history of this movement in relation to time, the symbolic use of dates. And the reason why we choose June 22nd, 2014, that's gonna be when this movement in an official way recognizes the first day of the first month and the first day of the fifth month. And these are going to be primary in us looking at the symbolic use of dates, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna, from there, we're going to look at all the first days of the first months in the Bible, all the first days of the fifth months. Now, there's going to be a wrong first day of the first month. That is, most will take um, Ezekiel 40, verse 1, where it talks about uh, uh, the first day of of, or it talks about, well, no, let me think here. No, that's not the one. There's an yeah, Yom. I'm trying to think what, no, that one's the 10th day of the first month. There's another one anyway. And then there's the first day of the fifth month they know, they don't notice, and that's in Ezekiel. So the, so the, uh, yeah, that one they is mistakenly take as the 10th day of the first month, but it's the 10th day of the seventh month, Ezekiel 40, verse 1. And then they have uh, the one in chapter um, it 28, where it talks about in the, uh, um, doesn't say uh, which month it is. It's just the first day of the month. And, and that's actually the first day of the fifth month when um, Tyre uh, mocks Israel because the city has been broken. The walls have been broken down. And that's going to be, uh, you know, nine days before the temple is destroyed, that that mocking occurs. So, so anyway, we had all these symbolic use of dates and, and we're marking June 22nd, 2014. It's also a date that Jeff marked as, as relating to FFA. So we can see that ultimately to look at this December 6, 2020 date, um, it's gonna be 77 months and 14 days from that June 22nd, 2014 date. So it gives us the symbol of the, the week and the month with the number seven. Uh, so it's, it's fairly significant in that, that sense.
Now, I know there's probably a lot more here. So, so we might look at that and we might put that together in some way. But we have all of these symbols that, that we can find in this line that we created. But we didn't create the line by using these symbols. Like this is an analysis of something, right? So that was what was so fascinating to me, how, they, how these things connected the way they did. Right. Now, if we were to construct a line and put dates there based upon this sort of system you have here, if, you, if somebody were to construct dates in the future saying, well, if we counted this many months into the future, we could have this date. And if we, you know, put this other date in here, we could connect this and connect that. You would see that that would be a false use of the symbolic use of dates. That is the symbolic use of dates can produce dates in the future, but under very strict guidelines and circumstances, right? That is, they have to directly come from prophecy itself. So for instance, when we use the week of Christ study, we, we came to April 5th, 2030. So I'm going to go back here. Right. So we have this April 5th, 2030 date. And, and that comes from the week of Christ study, which I'm, I'm not going to look at. But we're going to look at how this 2030 days, why it's, it's so significant here. So we know 2030 comes from the week of Christ study. So it's a primary study and it produces dates in the future that we predict events on. And, and it's tied up with all of these things, right? It's tied up with July 18th, all of these things that we predicted. They, they first come from the week of Christ study. I shouldn't say first, but without the week of Christ study, much of what we understand wouldn't exist in this movement. And the week of Christ study produces a date way in the future that, you know, we, we don't know what it means. But as an analytical date, it ties us symbolically to what we already understand. So I'm just using this here, April 5th. Right. And the April 5th, 2030 date then became witnessed to by the 2300 months from the first day of the first month to um, the first day of the first month in 2030, because April 5th, 2030 is the first day of the first month. And it's going to be 186 years, biblical years. So if you start on April 19th, 1844, and you use the biblical calendar because the start of the year starts on different dates, then you would count 2300 months, and that will bring you to April 5th, 2030. It's going to be the first day of the first month in 2030 on the biblical calendar. So the fact that it's 2,300 months is pretty bizarre, but it's exactly 186 biblical years. And then when we were studying the lines and we looked at the covenants with Abraham, we had chapter 12, 15, 17, and 22, where the covenants are, are, are given and ratified and all these things. Um, then we, we can see that if we multiply these, we would get 67,320 days, which is exactly 187 prophetic years. And so if we went from the first day of the first month in 1844 and, and we counted that, we would be short of this April 5th, 2030 date by 600 days. That is 12 times uh, 15 times 17 times 22 is 67,920, or, or pardon me, that's 967,320, but 2,300 months is 63,920, 600 days more, which is 20 prophetic months. So we have to this April 5th date, which is the first day of the first month, it's 186 biblical years, but it's 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months from April 19th, 1844.
And then we connected it also using uh, the first day of the first month in the story of Ezra to the first day of the first month in the story of Ezra. So that 354 days, and we could connect that to 9-11 to April 5th, 2030 in two different ways, either using uh, prophetic months of 30 days or actual lunar months connects us to the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. So 186 days past April 5th, 2030. So now when we look at um, uh, this uh, 2030 days, we can also do another count, right? So from June 22nd, We're just going to take this here like that. And we can bring it over to this April 5th, 2030 date, right? So, yeah. there. and this is going to be um, 57,000 and or 5,766 days. So we count from June 22nd, 2014 to April 5th, 2030. And um, so we're going to just put this here. So this is going to be 5766 six days, which is um, an interesting number of days because that is 31, which is the symbol of the midst of the week, times... 186. Okay. Does that make sense to people? Anybody have questions about that? So the fact that we have this 31 times 186, we can already see that the 186 is connected to the first day of the first month. And that comes from the midst of the week study, which is, of course, the midst of the week is 31 AD. So does that seem significant, that span of time? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it brings us to 2030 uh, with this symbol, right? This 2030 days here then becomes even more significant in that we can take that same date and connect to 2030. So these things become self-referencing. That's, that's the amazing thing about all of these structures. But this exists in this rejection of, of the message of Jephthah on December 6th. So all of these, all of these events, of course, are significant. Um, even without this structure, we can look at these dates and so forth. But now with the structure, they become very significant in that this fits into all of these lines that we have had, all of these things that we've been witnessing to in the story of Judges always keep bringing us to April 5th, 2030. Now, again, we don't know what that means as far as an event, but what it at least symbolically refers to, is that the period of the divorcement, right, from the story of Ezra, that there's this process. Now, we would like to get things cleaned up much more quickly. But in the story of Ezra, they come and they repent. On the 20th day of the ninth month, that's December 25th, 2021, right? But that 20th day of the ninth month also ties to uh, the, the first day of the 10th month, right? And so, so we know that that's going to be um, what event is the first day of the 10th month in, in 2022. You're going to have the first day of the 10th month, right? And that's going to be um, 
2022. So what was the first day of the 10th month? What was that tying us to? Wasn't the, it wasn't in 2022, it's gonna be in 2023. So that's where. So the first day of the 10th month is gonna bring us to December 25th, 2022. So we have the 20th day of the ninth month in 2021, but we also have the 20, the 10th, first day of the 10th month. That's gonna be when the divorce starts, right? And, and that's going to be one year later to the day. So that's going to be December 25th, 2022. So even though we, we, have on, we have this short span of time in the story of Ezra from when they begin their repentance and confession about being married to the strange wives, uh, for us, that's going to be a span of a year, right? So that means what, what's happening in in that history is going to take longer in our history because it's, it's more global. It's, it's a bigger issue in a sense. It's, we're at the end of time. So they become symbols of that. So this movement is still going to go through this process. And, and we can't have the Sunday law until this process is completed. Right, And it's completed on the first day of the first month, which is April 5th, 2030, according to the story of Ezra. So are we going to attach time to that and say that, that God has given this movement this time in which to accomplish this work and that we shouldn't expect the events that we have been predicting to occur anytime before 2030. Is that reasonable or is that, should we just look at this April 5th, 2030 as some something in the future that tells us there is this delay, but we don't know how long it is. Um, we did pray that God would extend the time for us to get our act together. And we did get that 2688 or whatever it was signed. And I know that God does fulfill prayer when, when we're mm -hmm. trying to act according to his will. At least our hearts are right. Yeah. So, so we know we have an extension of time. And symbolically, 2,688 days from that Thanksgiving in last year. Um. Yeah, so, and Ron just shared his file there, uh, the document. I think that's, is that what that is, or what is this? Is just a picture? So, um, that's just a picture of um, March 31st, 2020 to July 18th, 2020, and it's 110 days. I was, I noticed it when you had sparked about uh, the 110 earlier. Okay. I'm sorry for disturbing that's, that's you. Fine. That's no problem. That's good. Okay. So um, so there's 110 days from March 31st to July 18, 2020. And that's three months, 19 days, including the end date. Uh, you could also say, though, it's three, eight, uh, it could be a symbol of 318 because um, you're doing inclusive instead of. Uh, right? Instead of just cardinal count for the days. But anyway. Um, yeah, that one's inclusive. Yeah, so, and, and 318 is, is um, of course, not, not unimportant. Yes. It, it shows up lots of places and Colin's using it in his study. That, so one of the things that we see here is that, that if we're going to look at all of the things that God has given this movement, right? We have Colin studies, we have his Dilio studies, we have uh, um, the studies that we've done here. Um, and there's probably a lot more, of course, uh, 
there is, um, you know, D uh, D Daniel Vanderhorst studies. Um, all of these things have been pointing us to this use of the symbolic dates to analyze. But if we're going to get a date in the future, like April 5th, 2030, it's not produced by analysis, right? It's produced prophetically. That is, it was produced by the week of Christ. It's witnessed to by all of this analysis, but it's not produced by the analysis. And this to me is an important distinction that when we saw with Daniel Vanderhorst, he was trying to produce dates by analysis. And, and that analysis, would witness to the dates we already had, but it didn't produce events on future dates, right? So he would put these future dates and expect, well, maybe this is going to happen. And, and I don't think that's correct way to do things. So when I look at this April 5th, 2030, I'm not saying, well, we should expect this to happen on that date. What I'm saying is it shows that God has given us extra time. That work could be completed before then, right? And we don't particularly know how that's going to unfold as far as this divorcement. Because, you know, if, if we knew the outcome before the end, we wouldn't have to go through the process of the divorcement. So there is this process in which we have to go through in this movement that we would call the divorcement, right? Yeah, I like to call it a learning process or a learning curve that he's given us. Yeah, well, the Bible says it's a divorcement from the strange wives, right? right? So that means we have to be corrected in our understanding of God's word, in how we study, how we come to understand the truth. That is, we need to be corrected by Miller's rules so that we can understand Miller's rules more fully. Agreeable. And so, you know, we have this problem as Seventh-day Adventists, which is part of what we looked at these various lines, is we can see that we've inherited from Adventism um, a wrong-headed way of thinking, Right. That is, if we look at, um, uh, let's tell it to here. Where is this here? Oh, it's this line to do. Right, because when we look at the judges line, the darkness there, we can see that that's related to the understanding of prophecy. And basically for Adventists, it's the idea that we don't have time. That just one day we wake up and there's the Sunday law. That we're not even going to really watch and wait. But especially in relation to time, we have no idea when Jesus is coming back, no idea when any of this is going to happen. And of course, uh, we have some people speculating, doing time setting, and that, that hinders the, the correct understanding of time because you have disappointments, right? So for Adventists, it's like, aha, see, you, you can't do it. And so they just discount any type of application of time, even as a past analysis of events. So you put, you know, November 9th, 1989 on a line, and they think it's time setting, right? Well, they do, yes. Yeah, they, they you know, it's a past date. How are we setting time? Well, you put a date there. Yeah, but that's, you know, and we're saying it's the time of the end. Well, you can't do that because there's no time after 1844, right? You put 1863, you know, as the end of the prophetic mirror. And they say, that's time setting. Why is that time setting? Because there's no time after 1844. You can't put a date anywhere on a line and say that it has any prophetic significance after 1844, especially if you connect it to something in the past, some kind of prophecy or something, right? 
So that's time setting. That's spiritual blindness. Right. But that's the darkness, right? That's what I'm saying the darkness is. And what the judge's line is illustrating is light related to that darkness. But we can see. I agree. That, that who's being tested in this judge's line in the first angel's message? Uh, that that's, was the movement, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, FFA. So, so, we, so we have the movement. We have the FFA being tested in this history. That, that is the people who are following Jeff. They're being tested in this history under the first angel's message. And when we get to July 18, 2020, and the second message arrives, if you weren't benefited by the first, you can't be benefited by the second. So now we have this second angel's message and we're going to see its formalization is the rejection of that right the rejection of july 18th is its formalization because now jephthah is going to demonstrate in the very rejection of all of this symbolic use of time it's going to illustrate to the max the symbolic use of time and dates and spans right and even just first with the December 6th date, Judges 12, verse 6, the Shibboleth, right? So That's almost in your face. Right. I mean, when, when we saw the date there, December 6th, it was like, well, that was a really bad date to choose. I mean, also, you take the 126 and multiply it by 20. So it's December 6, 20, you know, 12, 6, 20. And that's 25, 20, right? 126 times 20 is 2520. So the, the writing was on the wall, um, you know, when they did that. So, in other words, many, many tickle you far Yes, the 126. So, so this to me is just, as we talk about the wheels within wheels, we can see how we've we've structured these lines the judge's line but we hadn't really analyzed each of these judges we had studied them and we had looked at the symbols and we could see that there that we could put dates to there we could see the events that happened we weren't really putting dates yet you know somewhat but not not specifically nailing things down when we first went through the story of the judges that's then, right we didn't then, and then we created this line based upon on our study of the judges. We put this line up, um, but we we still didn't know what we were doing yet, right? So we weren't, you know, I hadn't we hadn't figured all of this out with Jephthah, you know, what it meant. And we just we went through and we created this line because we started with this period of darkness and we looked at these events, and so we could see Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar. We could see Deborah and Barak dealing with the conflict with. Uh, um, Parminder's message. We could see that Gideon related to 11.9 more than anything, right? Though it is about July 18, 2020, because they're predicting that. But then we have the story of Jotham, you know, that's going to be parallel to Samuel Snow's letters. It's this uh, internal thing that has to do with the son of Gideon, the 70th week, right, that survives, right? And then, and then we have Tola and Jair, and we went through that, and we could see that that fits with July 18, 2020. And now we have Jephthah. So, so Jephthah illustrates, the line of Jephthah illustrates everything that we've already said that Jephthah is about, right? So, and, and it's pretty remarkable, right? This isn't something just, it's not really subjective. I mean, there's subjective elements, <clears throat> but there's so many objective witnesses and that we couldn't possibly construct these lines, you know. Even with supercomputers, you couldn't just create this because the events have to exist. Right. So and then those events have to be under or uh, acknowledged. 
Right. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, so the events exist, they acknowledge, they're connected thematically. You know, and this is the thing, and I've mentioned this many times, but when I first started doing my heavy duty study of chronology, I was already really familiar with Protestant understanding of how they do things because in studying the 70 weeks, I've read so many different studies on how people try to interpret the 70 weeks, you know, uh, using, you know, years of 360 days and all various kinds of calculations that people would use um, with the dates that they believed that, that were correct, even though they had wrong chronologies in many cases. Um, but people try to create structures similar to what we have but there would be no overarching thematic connection. That is, you know, they'd pick some date in ancient Jewish history that's not part of a structure, just, just a date, and usually it's just a year even, and, and then they try to connect it to some date in modern Jewish history. You know, so the Seven Days War, whatever, right? So they, they pick some, some event in... And, and they can be pretty insignificant events sometimes, or you know, pretty arbitrary. Um, and there cannot even be really a thematic connection between those dates, other than that those dates produce the spans of time they want. And sometimes their math is completely wrong too. So, you know, <laughs> you find all kinds of interesting things that people try to do. Um, but there's nothing like what we have done in this movement. There's just nothing close. You know, there are people who have done some calculations. I, for instance, I have recently found there's a few places where people counted the, the, the manna, the, the period for the falling of the manna as 2,084 uh, weeks, just like we have. But, um, you know, they have the wrong year for the Exodus, 1584. So they're a uh, different year completely which and they have a wrong chronology about everything else. But there are people who have managed to do some of the things that we've done, but they're not all in, they're not comprehensive. And they have all kinds of problems with them. Just things that just don't match up. Um, and they don't have this overall connection that we have with, with, when we go and we look back at the past, we have multiple structures interlocking wheels within wheels. Now, one of the, the criticisms that we receive within this movement regarding the work that we're doing is that it's too complicated, right? That's been an, a, a common objection, that it needs to be simpler. And, and, and of course, that is even an objection outside of the movement that has existed for a long time. You know, everything that you do, a child should be able to understand it which is a misuse of a statement that when it comes to the gospel, the gospel should be understandable to a child, right? A child can understand the gospel. But that doesn't mean that everything in the Bible must be able to be understood by a three-year-old, right? Yeah, how, how does a kid eat meat, right? I mean, a, a three-year-old yeah. eat meat. Yeah, because so the milk, the milk is the gospel, yeah, right. So a child can can have milk. But once you're full grown, you you have to eat solid food. Right? The Bible says there are things that are hard to be understood that it takes wisdom to understand certain things. So, I mean, it to me it's always been a really silly argument because the just throw away the Bible then, right? But we Agreed. need this complexity. We need this complexity to be a witness because this isn't something that can just be contrived, right? What we've done here is not something that could just be made up, and and it's how it unfolds to the movement, how it how God's truths unfold, that people, of course, who aren't following them they reject the message at the beginning i mean if you're in darkness obviously and you don't even receive the first message at all like you're just totally closed off to it well you're not going to be benefited by it and, and so you're not going to understand the second 
And then this third message that arrives, um, we can see that this is something that is now ongoing, right, in this movement. So since December 6, 2020, we've had a formalization of a message. And now we're going to have to understand how that message is empowered. And when we look at the line of the judges, we can see that it's going to be Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon that provide the empowerment of this message. And, and we're going to place this as December 25th, 2021, right? So the second message, which is formalized in December 6th and arrives on July, July 18, 2020. Now on December 25th, 2021, that message is going to be empowered. And it's going to be illustrated by these three judges, right? So I know we, we're going to probably, with what you did there, uh, Ron, I'll look at the document and we'll probably come back to it. But I want to put it together because, you know, I haven't had much time to, to go over everything. I just kind of looked at it this morning for a few minutes. Well, so. while I was doing that, <laughs> I kept getting, you know, um, these sensations, I don't know, uh, like, um, uh, complete excitement, you know, when I, when I kept seeing these different dates pop up with these different symbolic representations in it, that just, it floored me and I couldn't stop. Um, and, but I, I, I yeah. it was getting late and I sent you guys some stuff just to kind of get us on track for today, actually. Yeah. It, it's kind of like those dreams I had when I was a kid where I would find a whole bunch of coins in the gutter or something. And you just kept finding more and more coins. You know, I don't know if anybody's ever had those dreams, but I was raised poor. So, um, you know, quarters meant a lot to me, but you know, if you find, if you found a treasure in the field, you're going to be pretty excited. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, and that's kind of what it's like. So, so now you know what my life is like the last 10 or 12 years, 13 well, years. I have these moments, you know, I mean, like uh, when I started first hearing Jeff, you know, that, that excitement got there because I was kind of giving up because um, everybody I was talking to just was not into um, what the spirit of prophecy was saying. They go, oh, she says, yeah, but, you know, um, she didn't mean that. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, so getting back here. Um, we now look at these three. So this is supposed to be the empowerment on our line. These three judges, right? And so, and they're not going to say much above them, but what they say, we've already analyzed and we can see the significance of it. So we got, so after Jephthah, you got Ibzan of Bethlehem. So that's the house of bread. So the house of bread refers to studying God's word, right? Right. And and he had 30 sons, 30 daughters, whom he sent abroad and took in 30 daughters from abroad for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. And and he dies and he's buried in Bethlehem, right? And, and we already had this 30, 30, 30, right? So we've seen this. Correct. Up. And... So now we can say that this 30, 30, 30 is related to how did we do that before? Right. Well, we can find it here. So I think I'll find it this way. So we see it in Tola and Jair. It relates to uh, the week in that way, right? Um, that is the 777. Right, so it's divided by twelve. It's two five two five two point five. So it gives us the two fifty two and the five twenty five. Um, what else? We had. I'm sorry. Time. What are you asking me? No, just are you just asking me? Everybody. Oh. Right. So what else did we have at the thirty thirty thirty? I just can't, I know it's a, one of our charts, but I, I don't know how I typed it in. So 
if we go back, um, so I'm one of these lines here. Uh, just don't remember. Anyway, we, we brought it up somewhere. Um, oh, here it is. Uh, so this was in, um, here's where it was. So this was from December 25th, 2022. Um, and also from, so what we did is we took uh, December 25th, 2022 to April 5th, 2030. It's a period of 2,656 days. So all I did is I multiplied or I added 30 plus 30 plus 30 is 120, right? That's what I did. So it's the plusing of those times 29.53. Um, so what did I do wrong there? Oh, that's 90. That's why. 30 plus 30 plus 30 is 90, not 120. Times 29.530587. So that was just the number of months. So this would be 2,658 days. So that's that we're, is we're taking December 25th, 2022 to April 5th, 2030. And so we can see that this 30, 30, 30 being 90 days, right, is going to produce this date, April 5th, 2030. But we also know when we just took the 88 days that it actually was, right, that is it's 88 days in the story of Ezra, which is January 11th, 2030. It's 2,640 days to April 5th, 2030, right? So tw 2,640 days. So we have 18 extra days added by um, using instead of 88 times 30, we're using 90 times 29.53, right? So both of these produce April 5th, 2030, connected with these different dates. Right. And and so this um, the first day of the 10th month is December 25th, 2022 on the biblical calendar. And January 11th, 2023 also represents the first day of the 10th month because of its connection to um, uh, the story of Ezra. Right. So. So we can see that. Ibzad, Elon, and Abdon, which are December 25th, 2022 on our line, right? Or pardon me, 2021. So they're the December 25th date on our line. And that December 25th, 2021 is connected to December 25th, 2022. So we got Ibs in there. Now, now, we could probably create separate lines for each of these judges. That is, they are a single way mark, right, on the line of the judges. But there are three of them. And so each one of them can represent a line themselves, right? Agreeable. But if, but if we just zoom into them, what we're going to try to do here in drawing their line. And um, we're going to say that Ibzan is the first angel's message. Elon is the second. And Abdon is the third. Right. So if we're yeah, just I think that's what we came up with. Right. So so that's what we would we would do with these lines. But we haven't drawn out their line. We, we've talked about it. Right. We, we've analyzed uh, 
these these chapters, but we haven't drawn out a line of them, right? I thought they were the next, weren't they next? Yeah, that's what's next. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be drawing out their line. So um, I'm just going to... So normally what I like to do is do this. Just hang on. We're going to copy this line and paste it. Okay. So I'm going to just go over here briefly. So we have to create a new line, just like we did with all the other lines. So we just simply steal this. And we can create this new line. So we're going to get rid of these. So we're going to have a line that's going to start with Ibsen. Uh, and he's going to be the arrival of the first angel. So it's the first message. And, and we would have to put a date on this then, right? So we know there's a period of darkness. And we know that this line, which is the empowerment of the second angel on the line of the judges above, we know that this line has a period of darkness in which a message comes. And so we have to figure out when that is going to start. That wouldn't start necessarily on December 25th, 2021, but it could. And and I actually think that it does. So, but, you know, we haven't looked at it all yet. So I have a, a, a sort of a sketch in my mind of what I think this would do, what this line would do. This would have been easier copying this and doing this. Right. And then we know that Elon is going to be uh, the second angel message is arriving. And Abdom will be the third. Right? Whoops. Okay, so that's what we we propose. We're gonna have these three judges. We zoom into their waymark, and each one of them represents a message. These messages, of course, are all related because all of them are the empowerment of the second angel's message in the line above. So this is pretty simple, right, at this point. Right? We, can, we can easily do this. It's not, it's not super complicated or anything. Now, um, but we don't know the dates yet, except I would suggest that this one is going to start, so I'm just going to jump ahead and we, we can decide why we would put this one here, December 25th, 2021. That's where I suggest it starts. So, but we need to know what the darkness is that this line is addressing. So in this movement from December 26, from December 6, 2020, we're going to have actually a bunch of light that occurs. And so, you know, somebody might argue that that's not where we're going to start, but I just put it there. But there is a darkness in this movement from December 6. Now, maybe we could put December 6, 2020 as the darkness. I don't know. Um, I'm going to do this, maybe. Just different ways in which we could do this line. So let's say we put December 6th. Uh, 2020. Okay, because we do have a period of darkness that begins there. I mean, we do have darkness there. We have darkness. Agreeable. We have, so we have to decide what this darkness is. And, and so maybe the darkness would be uh, the darkness that results from the fact that FFA has rejected 
the symbolic use of dates, right? Basically rejected the entire message. And, you know, people are being kicked out of FFA, out of their chat. They're cutting off communication. Nobody will respond to any emails, right? So this is where we are December 6, 2020. It, we've got this. Um, period of darkness. So, so we could say the darkness begins before that. But at the period of darkness, and the darkness could be the disappointment from, you know, July 18th or something, right? But we're going to have a crease, increase of knowledge that begins there. That's, that's all I'm trying to point out. And that cre increase of knowledge would be uh, lots of different things that happen. We're going to have December 25th, 2020, right? We're going to have January 6th, 2020. Right? So we're going to have all of these things that are part of an increase of knowledge. That is, events occur on symbolic dates, just like December 6th, 2020 becomes the symbolic date. So you're going to have... Um, December 25th, 2020, the bombing of Nashville becomes very significant. But we, we have to look for something that's a formalization of this message. And now sometimes we would look at camp meetings or we'd look at documents or, or things like that. Um, and I do produce documents uh, related to what happened on December 6th. I, I produce a document, so let me look it up. Um, uh, it's it's going to be called Three Days. Um, I see light just in the date itself. In what date? December, December 6th. Um, date 2020. Yeah. Is that one two one two six. <laughs> that yeah. was right. So that was the, the part of the main thing we've said there with December sixth. Okay. Find it this way. So I'm going to have a document where I'm going to go through and explain what happened on the 4th and the 5th and the 6th. That is, I'm going to take that as the three days from Ezra. So, the, so, that's, and, and so I'm going to produce this paper. Now I'm going to publish it on Academia. That's what I'm trying to find. What date I published it. Um, I don't see the paper here. That's what I'm having problems with. I do have the martyrdom of Ashley Elizabeth Babbitt in the siege of Washington, D.C. on January 6th. That one I published. Um, and I'm not sure the date. I think it was January 10th, but anyway. So anyway, I'm going to have to find those dates um, dealing with the three days. Oh, yeah, it's called Three Days in Ezra and Nehemiah and the Relation to Events of December 4th to 6th, 2020. And um, I don't think they put the date where I actually published it. Um, sometimes I put that in there myself. So I don't put the date that I published. I have to find the document itself.
what was the name of the document? Oh, it's called Three Days. Um, but I have other papers called Three Days, so I have to figure out which one it is. Because <laughs> we did a study on Three Days, so I just have to find this paper. But anyway, it's going to be very soon after December 6th that I put out this paper. So I'm going to deal with, um, uh, let me see here. So I look at when this paper was created. Um, so it's going to actually be created, it says here. February 14th, 2021, um, which I think seems a little off, but. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, anyway, write this paper regarding that. So it could be possible that it was that late, but it means it was written after the Ashley Elizabeth Babbitt um, paper. <clears throat> yeah, because this paper is pretty involved. I'm going to deal with lots of Three different days uh, in Ezra and Nehemiah. Is that the one? Yeah. So I'm analyzing quite a bit of stuff in there. Um, but yeah, I don't think the paper was written in February of 2021. I'm pretty sure it was earlier. So sometimes I create a new paper. So, <clears throat> but anyway, so we're going to have an explanation of December 6, 2020. That's going to be a formalization of that. Now, at least that's what I would say. But I could be wrong. Maybe we could look at December 25th, 2020, and the empowerment being January 6th, 2021, right? Something like that. And then we have December uh, 25th, 2021. So, so we know that somewhere between December 6th, 2020 and December 25th, 2021, we're going to have this formalization and empowerment, whatever we're going to choose. Now, I think we would choose that based upon the information in the story of Ibsen. So Ibsen gives us this connection to the story of Ezra. Right. Now, um, so uh, let me think here. So I've got to find this. So in 2020, when they have this um, uh, rejection of the message, we also should note that this date is the 20th day of the ninth month, right? Because that 20th day of the ninth month moves around. So they didn't just publish the paper on the sixth day of the 12th month to give us a 126. They published their paper on the 20th day <coughs> of the ninth month on the biblical calendar. So, so if we look at this, we know this is also the 20th day of the ninth month. Right? Okay. Right. So we have this 20 days of the ninth month. That's the arrival of the first message. So I think we're going to stick with that. And then we're going to have an increase of, of knowledge. Now, the increase of knowledge could be including uh, the bombing of Nashville and January 6th. We could just we could just put that in there, you know, as the increase of knowledge. The so formalization would be the understanding of that light put into a paper or presented at some presentation. Theodore? 
Yeah. I have 224-2021 as your three days in Ezra and Nehemiah as its created date. 224? So that's the two. 224-2021. Okay. So that's probably when I finished the paper. So it was later. Okay. So so it, I started it on the 14th of February in 2021, and I I completed it on the 24th, I guess. Is that a PDF you have? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's when I made it into a PDF. So I didn't look at the PDF yet. Um, okay. Yeah, that's, that's it's, uh, I don't see your name on it. I just see the, the description, the created date, and the modified date is the same. Um, that's that's it. That's all I got. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I have, yeah, February 24th, 2021. And that's, that's the date the PDF was created. It's interesting, it's February 24th, 2023, uh, the last time it was modified, two years later to the day. Hmm. But here it says it was created February 12th, 2021, and um, that the PDF was created actually February 20th, 2021. So it got two different things i date modified and date created so i'm not sure why that would be different but anyway so so we're going to say that um it was if, 24 not 21 i mean it's the way that date i have yeah but mine says 20 2012 or not or, or february 12 2021 it was created that is that is the um, the Word document, and it was last modified February 24th, 2023. And then the PDF says it was last modified February 24th, 2021, um, and that it was created February 20th, 2021. So two days before the date you, four days before the date you have. So when it was created, that's what it says on my computer. So. That was the download that I got from your your academia site. That's why it was. That's why it had that twelve twenty four or two twenty four date on it. I believe. So that's so what the base published. Uh, yeah. So the PDF was actually printed out. That's I turned it into a PDF on February twentieth, twenty twenty one. But I I modified it in some way. Could be choosing a printer, or something like that too on the 24th. Anyway, so we, we'll, we'll deal with these dates a bit later. Um, but so we see something here regarding these, these, and I just want to get the third angel arriving. Now, um, so, so we have these dates. So we're going to say Elon is going to arrive uh, December 25th, 2021. That's going to be the second angel. And and we know what happens there, right? That's where um, okay. Collins. Yeah, we have Collins study, and we begin uh, the next day. We begin our study of uh, that we're on. Uh, let me see. Twenty. No, we we begin uh, examining. I can't remember what we did there. We did something the next day on on December twenty fifth. Or December 26, 2021. We started a new study. Um, well, that was after, that was the day after you had been um, dealing with the Vietnamese group, I believe. Uh, that was the 24th, I believe, you did that. And then the yeah, 25th then was, was Colin's presentation, and you were a little tired and didn't have everything sink in. And then the 26th, uh, we, we started uh, the understanding the lines on the 26th. So the study right. we're presently on began the day after the 25th. So 
So, so we have anyway, the second angel arrives and it r- arrives in connection with Colin's study and, and also Stephen's understanding. And then of course the clash that occurs, which wasn't between me and Colin, right? It was the other people listening to it. All right. <clears throat> okay. And, and so then we're going to have this third angel arrives. And now to me, it, it's pretty clear. Um, now, Elon doesn't have too much, uh, except that he's of the descendant of Zebulun, right? So there's going to be some things there. He judges Israel 10 years. So one is we have a seven years, a 10 years, and then the final one is going to be eight years, right? So you're going to have seven, 10, and eight. So in, in Hebrew, you know, you would write like 18 would be 10 and 8. But this is going to be 7, 10, and 8. So one of the things that this uh, line witnesses to is it's going to be July 18, right? These three judges all represent July 18, right? Seven years, 10 years, and eight years it gives us 7, 18, July 18, okay? Um, now, if we're Can going, we also to, see something in that those numbers itself. We've dropped the zero. We see one seventy eight there, or one eight seven in those eight, numbers. That, that, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We see July eighteen. We we don't really need to drop the zero because in Hebrew, if you're going to say eighteen, it's going to be ten and eight. You don't have a number for eighteen, right? Right. So you have seven years and then 10 and eight, which is 18. So we have July 18 there, right? That's what I'm trying to say. With the arrival of each of these messages. Yeah, I remember us discussing that actually. Okay. Okay. And um, now then when we get to... uh, the next line instead of taking um so now we're going to get to here so now we're going to have december 25th again as the third angel right this is going to be december 25th 2022 which we've we've already marked it becomes significant But we know that this is the first day of the 10th month. Right? The day when the divorcement from the strange wives occurs or begins. So so that's where we're going to end today. And we can see the first two are tied together with the 20th day of the ninth month. And the next two are tied together with the December 25th. But they produce this these lines from the story of Ezra and then what we need to do is take the symbols that we have and attach them to these other dates the formalization and empowerment of the first two messages and so we would know we're in the time of this third message since December 25th 2022 the time of the divorcement so this be it becomes pretty simple now because we're used to doing this we can easily see how these lines are constructed and we already have understood all of these dates and all of these symbols so it's fairly easy to put them on a line it's getting a lot easier yeah yeah okay so let's close with prayer dear father in heaven thank you again for all your blessings and the time in this study Uh, we are thankful that you've uh, given us the skill and ability to examine your word, and that your Holy Spirit has also continued to teach us. Um, We ask for strength to follow the light that you've given. We ask for forgiveness for our sins, and that you can cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Bless each person studying truth, and use us to your glory is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.